Yeah. All right, guys. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> podcast got- number motherfucking two. Bloody Roots podcast with uh, Jose, Jose and me. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to be uh, a little bit, uh, you know, not give up all of our information. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I will give out my opinion on certain things. So we're having this debate right now. Um, and we I, have Emilio sitting literally to the right of us. Yeah. So this is Emilio's point of view. Okay. Why, why does the U S send, um, I mean, sorry, sorry. Yeah. 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 And Venezuelans and Ecuadorians and Chileans and all that shit. Um, yeah, why is Texas sending uh all the immigrants, illegal immigrants, out to the sanctuary cities, right? All right. And then he's saying, like, and, and why isn't the U.S. communicating with uh, with their native uh, countries and letting them know where all these people are going, okay? So I'm going to be honest. I work with majority white people. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and, yeah, majority Republicans, not, not Democratic white people, not those uh, – pink hair people <laughs> but uh yeah dude so check this out um i don't give a fuck about politics i'm not either or i'm what's right what's right i don't even know too much about politics you just want what's fair yeah i just want what's fair and i and if i see bullshit i'm gonna call it simple as that i don't care so you're you're a realist i i try to be but so this is a thing so the u.s honestly and i'm sure texas is 100 more but the u.s is pissed as fuck because Mexico, that can be a badass fucking country, um, doesn't take care of its people. A lot of people can't even fucking go outside um, at fucking 9 p.m. anymore because they might get shot, they might get kidnapped, or blah, 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 all this bullshit. And I could tell you, not to interrupt you, but go I can tell you that, yeah, anytime that I've gone to Mexico, and I haven't been there since, I want to say, 2017, 2016, but I know for a fact, like, me personally, I don't feel comfortable being out at night over there. Yeah. And I'm not a flashy guy either. There, it's more of a thing like if you're flashy, like if you're some guy that likes to be, oh, where everything, what they say in Spanish, de marca, like yeah. everything, like fashion brands, stuff like that, mm-hmm. you're destined to have some bullshit started with you or somebody to try to start some shit with you because you're being too flashy. They might think, you know, you have money. Let's take advantage of this guy. Yeah. And that's I've I've always had that worry in Mexico, like, oh, I'm just gonna dress my regular self. I dress in the same clothes I've worn for God knows how many years. So just walk around and then go, go go back go back home at nine o'clock. Call it a night. Yeah, that's cool. But when I used to go to Mexico, nine o'clock, I was getting ready in the fucking bathroom, getting ready to go out to La Plaza. I was ten fucking years old by myself with no with my parents, um, not worried. Um, because they didn't have to be, and I was nine years. I was like uh, 10, 11, 12, I don't know. All those, I all those, those years. Times, dude. I went to Mexico. Yeah, dude. The little la- the ladies would be selling the fucking little eggs with the confetti, and then they sell the little BB guns. Dude, I remember, dude. Like, yeah, dude, dude. There was all kinds of shit. I remember, like, last time I went, dude. Um, my dad let me drive the truck. I was like fucking 11, 12 years old, bro. I swear to God, it was a bravada truck. That's the last time I went to Mexico. I was twelve. So um, we bought a bunch of fucking BB guns, me and my homies, and uh, we were driving around the whole fucking Valle, bro. Um, and there was one of my, some of my homies in another truck, and I was in another truck. Bro, we were chasing each other with our windows down, doing drive-bys with the BB guns. <laughs> yeah, dude, let's do that shit now. Let's see what the fuck happens. Dude, they'll chop my dick off and put it right up my ass. No, dude. You'll be in one of those videos getting your head chopped off. <laughs> yeah, dude. Nah, dude. Fuck that, bro. That's what I'm trying to say. Moral story, dude. In a place like that, why why is the Mexican government allowing all this bullshit to happen? Why? Most likely they're involved. I don't fucking know. Moral story is if the Mexican government don't give a fuck about their people, um, it makes it harder for another country that doesn't even govern them to take care of them like, like their own country should. So that's where all these problems are coming from. Venezuela, why are the Venezuelan people coming to the U.S.? Because they're escaping that shitty ass government that's controlling them. It's the same reason why. I mean, and the living like everybody sold the American dream, and it's true. I mean, here if you work your ass off, you can become something, do do something really good. But you have to really you work for what you're gonna like. Expect to work hard if you want something good, and you will get it for the most part. 
I think it's a fucking rabbit hole because the American dream. So this is why um I, this is why I feel like maybe a lot of Americans get pissed too, bro. Because honestly, dude, how many times have you heard um native like Mexican people? You know, and I love my my people and shit. I love the rasa and shit. But how many times have you heard them that? Oh, I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna get my pension, and I'm gonna get the fuck out and go to Mexico. Yeah, dude. It's like uh, all right, boom. Here, I'm out. Peace. See yeah. you later. Toodles. Yeah, dude. No, that that's fucked up, bro. I mean, oh, it's, like it's you, cool you, using the opportunity here to go back to the yeah, mo- the yeah, motherland. yeah. But and it, and it's fucked up not because they did that. It's fucked up because that's the only choice they had to survive. Because that's what I'm saying. That why the for fuck some, for some financial freedom, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why, why, like, dude, Mexico? I feel like, dude, Mexico is beautiful no matter where you go in Mexico. That's that's number one fact, dude. It's fucking amazing in Mexico, beautiful as fuck, dude. So number one, it has a lot of um potential in in fucking Mexico to be fucking badass. People go there. People can immigrate to Mexico if it was a safe fucking place to be. Um, American, do people complain about America that it's so bad? It's so bad. Like, dude, fuck you, dude. No, it's not, dude. I can go outside right now in my house and chill there till like two in the morning. I can't do that in fucking Mexico, dude. This is I can't do that in Iraq. I can't do that in Afghanistan. I can't do that. All those other fucking places. I don't even want. I don't even want to go across the fucking ocean to to check that bullshit out. So, I mean, this is a good country, bro. It's it's fucking great. Um. I see why people want to come out here, but it would be a way better world if if um, the Southern American countries took way better people, way better care of their people. Uh, I mean, I hope to God it happens. I think it would be great, and through the Western Hemisphere would would fuck um, the Eastern Hemisphere right now. Yeah, <laughs> but it's the same issue, dude. It's and it's never gonna it's never gonna stop the greed, but it will come to a really bad halt at some point where the economy just goes to shit, especially here too. But everybody, it's all it's all about greed. It's all about money. Yeah. And I don't want to get too deep into politics, but yeah, no, that's yeah. There's no there's no escaping it, really, to be honest. Yeah, and another thing, like if you come to the U.S. and uh, you work a nine to five, you're making it, you're doing all right, you have a decent work schedule, blah blah blah, you know. You get deported. You go back to Mexico. Like, dude, you're fucking working. Uh, like my uncles, dude, from Mexico. Like they they be working from fucking six, seven in the morning to fucking uh, you know, like nine, ten p.m. Like hard fucking labor. And I'm bitching about it if I if I get that a day like that for one day. <laughs> so yeah, dude, fuck that. I'm not going to Mexico unless I win the lottery and. I have money to fucking stabilize myself and my family out there. Like fuck that. And even I wouldn't, then, I might I wouldn't just stay go here. to Mexico if I win the lottery. Dude. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. Never mind. I'll disappear. I'll disappear to somewhere in the U.S. I won't. I won't specify where, but I'll disappear. You're right. No, you know what? Never mind. Only I, my I only my loved ones will know where I reside. Yeah, I'll probably just stay in my house and just put a nice jacuzzi or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, honestly, look, if, if if you became fucking wealthy and you had a, an okay house. And you use that wealth to fucking really just invest into what you already have. Bro, you could have like an amazing fucking thing. Like if I, you know, if I if I fucking hit jackpot and I and I started making shit ton of money, dude, I would just fucking fix my house, make my house a thousand percent. I mean, that's that's the thing. Like you become a fucking um don't over ambitious and you try getting too much and this and that. Yeah. Like work on what you already have and and when you have the opportunity to better what you already have, bro, it's the the sky is the limit. That's what that's the thing. Like it's Correct. it's a mentality. Like people, um, they keep wanting more and more and more. Be humble. Yeah, exactly. You want more and more, and then you keep trying to look for more instead of um actually like uh being happy with what you have, and then you better what you already have, and then there you go. It's fucking a hundred percent. Ain't that right, huh? <laughs> that's real. That's as real as it gets, dude. Yeah, I know, dude. Well, uh, how how's this beer hidden nicely or what? Yeah, it's it's. I prefer this one because the this is not a sponsor, but Modelo, the the Negra one, it I for me it's smoother. For some reason, the other one I started lately. I feel like when I drink it, I'm like, oh, like it just doesn't settle. 
Really? I don't know. I like both of them, but but yeah, this if I drink one of these first, dude, I feel like the the other ones they go down like fucking Kool Aid, man. Like it's so fucking smooth. Like really, it tastes so, so like this one seemed harsher to you. Oh yeah, this one is uh, I don't know, dude. It's like a heavier taste. The other one is like lighter. But you it's heard, lighter. It's more watery or the something. Last time that that we were here for the what was it? Oh, it was for the birthday party, and your your neighbor. What's his name? Uh. Oh, Lee. <laughs> yeah, Lee. He was saying how the darker beers have less shit in them, like less shitty ingredients. Oh, yeah. I think so. Like these are less the the black the black beer is uh, less processed. Yeah, that's pretty interesting because, yeah, I hear like if you guys actually do your research on like what the fuck they do to like candies, uh, beer, uh, just just process um, shit. You know what I'm saying? It's disgusting. Uh, just the like something I saw that was disgusting that I can tell you right now. Um, hey, dude, uh, beer up! <laughs> Shouts out to Emilio. Shouts out to the bartender <laughs> barista. Boom, boom. Uh, I don't know if there's no more negatives. I'll just get a regular one. Yolo. What were you saying about? I'm down with it both. You know what I'm saying about the ingredients. Oh yeah, so dude, this is crazy as shit. So, um, when you're eating a red, uh, red gummy. Which was, which is what I just gave the kids. <laughs> it has all kinds of dyes in it, yeah. No, dude, fuck the dyes. They use um insects. They use insects for the coloration, dude. That's how they get red. Insects. I searched it up. I saw it on a video, an informative video, and then I searched it up and I checked, and it's fucking true. Like, um, the majority of red candies, like gummy candies type, they um they use insects. Well, yeah, just like red velvet cake. That's the biggest thing that red velvet, red velvet cake. The coloring for that is it comes from a from beetles, I think, or some shit. Like for real? That. Yeah. I mean, as long as it ain't cockroaches, I guess. Oh. I think chocolate cake is. I think chocolate. Oh yeah. I mean, look. Okay, you know what, dude? I'm I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you this. Chocolate cake comes from cockroach. For real? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't give the a coloring. fuck, dude. I, you're like I love chocolate cake. I, I, I've ate in a lot of restaurants in Chicago, and I'm sure I've had cockroach on several occasions. But cockroach um, eggs, yeah, yeah, cockroach shit and fucking piss. enchiladas with some cockroaches in that bitch. But um, I guess I don't really give a shit about that, dude, and I don't get like panicked by it because at the end of the day, dude, like if it tasted good, what the fuck was the problem, man? Motherfuckers yeah, in Africa it. and shit like that, and South America, or you know, like, or just. I don't know. Even out in the country, bro, they be eating like grasshoppers and shit like that. Like that's fucking gross, dude. And they eat it, so fuck it. Why the fuck not? <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you ever see? There's there was a video. I'm sure there's multiple videos, but it looked like it was in the hood in Chicago, where these guys found a fucking cat freeze dried behind a Chinese place. What is that? What is that? <laughs> you know, like when with meats, sometimes they'll uh, like they'll prepare it, or they'll have it in um. Like vacuum sealed. Yeah. Yeah. Like vacuum sealed plastic. Get the <laughs> fuck out. <laughs> Holy shit. But it was a video and it was in, it was in like in the hood and the guy pulls it out of the, it was a trash. I don't know if it was a trash can or something behind the Chinese restaurant, mm -hmm. but it was a cat. Like, behind the Chinese restaurant. It was a, it was a cat that was frozen. That's so racist. Or freeze dried or whatever you want to call it <laughs> in a, in a trash can behind a Chinese joint. We don't know what we're I mean, eating. facts Sometimes are facts, don't guys. Don't eating. get booty hurt. I don't give a fuck. I'm not I'm not hating on Chinese food or anything like that. Yeah, but I, I love can't. Chinese food. I yeah. fucking love egg rolls. I love shrimp fried rice. Yeah. Dude, it's the bomb. Oh, Some what's, your home. Nah. What's, what's the other thing? Lo mein? Huh? Yeah, lo mein. What about Kung Pao? Do you like Kung Pao? Dude. Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. <laughs> what was that? Chosen one. Oh yeah, yeah. I heard they that. So yeah, I heard Emilio, about that. Emilio saying Emilio probably can't be heard right now. He you probably hear him faintly, but he's trying he's telling us that the shrimps are the the cockroach of the sea. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I guess it's true, but even the but dude, the shrimps we get in the Chinese food is like the shrimps that you that you see, you know, like in the paquetitos, the little packets that they sell at the store, like the Mexican packets where it has like the camarones and they're like these little ass dry yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it, dude. That's what's in the shrimp fried rice. Fuck it, dude. I see smaller in the maruchan. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, those are like too small. It kind of worries me a little bit, but whatever, man. Fuck it, dude. 
If it looks like shrimp and it tastes like shrimp, then it's motherfucking shrimp. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, <coughs> lobsters. I don't know, dude. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, meat, um, cat, whatever. That doesn't <laughs> fucking matter to me. But I am gonna tell you something. Shout out to Peta. Uh, you guys are gonna love to hear this. Um. <laughs> So actually, in a town right by uh, right by right by our hometown, yeah, yeah, them pita lovers gonna hate this one. Um, so actually, there's this town right next to our hometown in Mexico, um, and those fuckers they they kill the dogs. They they find like stray dogs, and shit. If your dog might escape, even when they has a tag on it, uh, you better pray he comes back to you, man, because those motherfuckers they make the best chanclas out of dog. <laughs> And it's fucked up. Wait, are you serious? I swear to God, dude, in Sawayo. Yeah, the... the um, Sawa- out a dog? Yeah, dude, so my, my foreman at work, oh, he's no. from Sawayo. And uh, he's like, oh, he, like, one day we came out of work and shit, right? So he's like, oh, see, he calls me huevos. I don't know, he's a little prick, but... um, <laughs> why, why huevos? Because he's a fucking asshole. It's just like a way of talking shit in their town. <laughs> he's like, he's calling you balls, dude. <laughs> No, he just sees me as a walking pair of balls, I guess. I don't know. He, yeah, I get a fuck it, whatever. You know, at least I got balls. <laughs> but he's like, he's seen me, right? He's like, oye, huevos, um, acabo de llegar de, del pueblo. And y, y, y te voy a hacer unas chanclas bien chingonas que compré. And I go outside, dude, and I'm like feeling them. And I'm like, damn, man. <laughs> That's I was like, good quality. <laughs> I was like, these are a little more stretchy, dude. What the fuck, dude? I don't know. I got like some Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes. I don't know. It just felt weird, man. Something felt different, man. You know? Yeah, dude. So I asked him. I was like, dude, I was like, what the fuck, dude? I was like, I never seen some this fucking color and this fucking <laughs> texture. I don't know. It just feels weird, dude. He's like, no, es que son de perro, wey. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? I'm like, you, you, this is a fucking dog, bro. I'm like, are you fucking? And then I, you know, at the time, like, um, my wife, she had our dog that at the is, house. That, that's fucked up, dude. Swaggy, yeah. I'm like, no, dude. I'm just like thinking about my dog. Like, fuck. I'm like, fuck it. Well, I mean, once he dies, I mean, make him into shoes. Once he dies, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you still useful dog. You know what I'm saying? I got a little <laughs> memory of you, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, dude, no, dude. It's some some crazy shit, dude. Like, and I seen this fucking video. You know, um. Speaking of dogs, I seen this video. It's fucked up, dude. It's some like uh, you know, two guys, one hammer type of shit. Um in China, dude. I believe it's in China or somewhere in Asia, dude. Um, there's there's a a country that fucking actually has the dogs like like dude, like roasting like a pig would. Like yeah. a fucking thing through their ass, out through their mouth, and spinning around in yep. fucking fire, dude. And you got the fucking poor little dog with his tongue sticking out, like all fucked up, dude. It's so sad, dude. They just have a whole bunch of them, bro. And it's like, dude, how can you kill a dog, dude? This is just kind of fucked up, you know? Yeah. I don't know. And I don't know if in those areas, wherever that is happening, if it's a it's something that they're used to, that, they, that that's the culture. Because for the most part, I think everybody domesticates their dogs, right? Unless you live on a farm and shit like that. Like... When I look at, say, like people like my grandparents, right, that they they have, you know, they, they live, they have a ranch and all their pets and stuff like that. They're not allowed in the fucking house. Yeah. They got to stay out. You're stay outside. Yo. You're an animal. Yeah. Those there's, most- no, there's no like, oh, let me come in. I yeah. Can kiss my dog. Oh, let me bring them to my room, to my bed. <laughs> Bro, the dogs in Mexico, like. My suegra, she love my my mother in law. She loves loves her dog, Lo- like she would take more care of that poor dog than her than her than her kids. She loves them that much, and I and I'll be like suegra. I was like, why why you take care of them that much, man? I'm like fuck that shit, bro. I'm like <laughs> I'm like my my I'm like my grandpa, my grandma. You know, like she, you know what they would give to to eat to the dogs, la la pinche comida from like two weeks ago because they tried to and they love that shit. They eat that shit up, son. Dude, them tortillas, they got mold on them, and they're all fucked up. They, you know, and they're like, here you go, here you go, guys, some chilaquiles. They'll, they'll throw it in there, mix it up with the fucking guisados, all chalo perder. It smells like fucking pedo and with all this old, crazy with shit. With milk, yeah. Yeah, and then they'll be like, here's something to drink, guys. Pinche leche toda cuajada and shit. Pinche queso. 
And, and the dogs are like, dude, the healthiest dogs, the best dogs, smart, most obedient. <laughs> and then the dogs we got here, they're like, they they like they're too privileged. Yeah, dude, you try taking something away from them, they try biting you like motherfucker. <laughs> like this is my house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude, fucking dogs are little fuckers, dude. But it's true. I yeah, I think it depends on what because we were on the topic of the whole dogs being cooked or whatever in whatever Asian country you saw. Yeah. But and I was talking about that recently with with somebody about that the whole thing about just the, the things that are the people are accustomed to and I had brought up the story about the. The frozen cat that was found but yeah dude it's something like people have different customs it's the same thing like when you have a belief of something try to respect that person's belief even if you don't just dis- don't agree with it <laughs> just yeah. look, look the other way <laughs> and yeah i mean that's yeah because dude i we're animal lovers we're not we're not animal haters we're, we don't i don't know sometimes they be some assholes yeah i'm not gonna <laughs> lie to you <laughs> Sometimes there be some little fuckers, man. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, but the- like, why the fuck do they run away after we give you shelter, we shower <laughs> you, we feed you, we throw you some salchichas here and there, some carne asada? Like, bro, I do not. I'm not gonna pay uh ten bucks a pound and give that dog a piece of meat, but my wife will do it anyways. And then the motherfuckers still want to run away. Like, maybe you should run away, motherfucker. How about that? <laughs> maybe you don't belong here, huh? <laughs> You, so you, gotta hash, you gotta hash out some bad ill feelings with a uh, with a dog. Yeah, no, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I just let him run away. I told my wife, I said, next time this guy runs away, he's he's out. That's it. It was nice knowing you, buddy. Ne- on to the next one. If you want another one, that's it. Uh, we get one that looks exactly the same, and uh, it should feel the same. I would say, <laughs> but uh, dude, I- I'm gonna change the topic on you real quick though. <laughs> on, a, on a lighter note, no. Right? I, yeah, no, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I want to touch base on this kind of crazy, dude. Like, I was, I don't know, dude. Maybe I'm just fucking giving myself too much. Uh, I don't know. Like, if I had some sort of ability and shit, which I know I don't. I know maybe I'm just fucking coming up with this bullshit and I'm just bullshitting. But I think it's fucking insane, dude. I, I've been thinking about Queen Elizabeth, you know, for the last couple months, right? I swear to God, dude. I swear <laughs> to God. thinking about Queen Elizabeth. I'm just like, uh, yeah, no. Um, it's crazy, though. I have been thinking like, damn, dude, like, okay, how the fuck is Biden, like, 40 years younger than her and fucking up? And this lady's still running shit in England, dude. Like, one of the most powerful countries in the world. And, and she's still killing it, you know what I'm saying? And it's crazy as fuck, dude, because after that shit happened... I mean, yeah, I mean, it was three months later after I thought about that. But, yeah, dude, she, she finally passed away. And uh, she, I'm hoping she's in a better place, you know, whatever. But uh, it's it's fucking crazy, dude. I just, I don't know. It's just one of those people, dude, that you think, like, they're never going to pass away. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just fucking crazy, dude. Like, they've been around since, it doesn't... since Hitler and this and that. Like, dude, I feel like <laughs> when I read the, that shit on, on, on Hitler, like, I felt like that was ages ago. Like, no, dude, that was only, like, that wasn't even 100 years ago yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was, like, in the 19, 1930-something yeah, if you think to about it, it's 1940-something. It's not that long ago. Now it's, like, yeah, it's over almost 100 years. That's fucking nuts, dude. Like, how, did you feel, like, any sort of way when she passed away? Like, did you feel a little, like, I don't know, fucking weird or something? Like, I don't know. I didn't feel jack shit, dude. You didn't give a shit? <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, because, like... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, she passed away. She was old. Yeah. She's fucking old, dude. I know, <laughs> like, dude. I, what but... do you expect? Like, even... Yeah, I, I get it. Like, if a family member passes away, that's going to hurt because you have, like, this emotional connection with that person. But somebody that you don't know and they're old, it's like, oh, okay. That's good. Like, I mean, it's not that, oh, yeah, I'm glad she died. No. She was old. She passed away. And that's it. Like... For me, it didn't affect me when I, I would I heard people talking about it yesterday. I went to watch my wife's basketball game and I heard, overheard people talking about, oh, you heard about Queen Elizabeth? And in my head, I'm like, oh, what do they got to talk talk about? Why, why, why do they have to talk about this this shit? It's like, like it's it, do, it doesn't it doesn't affect us. It's just because the, the, the fame of that queen, like we don't I don't know no fucking story about her, or about what good she did or all this yeah yeah i i have no 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 hatred no nothing towards the royals or whatever but it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't affect me so therefore 
I'm gonna tell you I why. Don't, I, don't give a shit. I think it could be a possible matter, okay? And I'll put it in perspective too. So you've seen a lot of um, successful businesses that you know they made it, whatever. You know, dude, dude bought it up from from the ground up, and then um, he gets old, he has kids, and then he's like, he, "Here, son, um, in my will." When I die, you will inherit my business. The son's like, all right, dad, I got you, man. Pass that shit over, son. Okay, cool. Dad passes it over to son. Bro, son fucks, fucks everything up, up the moment dad dies. Now, I'm not saying, I mean, King Henry's almost, or is that his name? I don't fucking even know. Whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, I'm sure he's almost as old as his mom, but, um, dude, you don't know, like, you know how much shit he couldn't do, <laughs> like while Queen Elizabeth was there. Now that she's gone, it's like damn, woo! Like you know what I'm saying? He's had plenty of time, <laughs> plenty to think of what to do. And it's not anything like, could happen. Do like balls to the wall. It's not like she suddenly died. She's been, I think she's been in bad shape for a while now. I heard for a year, but yeah. I don't know. She's been in bad shape for a while now, and yeah, she finally passed away. I know, dude. I, like, I remember... Um, but that's fucked up to think that, like, this is your family. This is your blood, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm just waiting for the day. I mean, we don't know if he thinks like that, though. I'm waiting for the day this bitch dies so that I can fucking take over. Do you over. think he's thinking that, though? Honestly. A lot of people do think like that with inheritance. Like, yeah, well, right? Um, they, like, but they might be close. And he, they, obviously, you're going to feel... It's your mom, yeah, dude. You're gonna, you know what I'm you're saying? You're going to feel something. But there's people that are still greedy as fuck. Even... I've... Ex- I've experienced it, I guess, through not not through my family, but through friends of of family where people pass away and people are greedy as fuck. Yeah. And these are family. These are people that we're not even the family, but they're the family. And they're like they want to want, want the people's money or they want whatever personal belongings that were of value. And it's like, dude, I don't give a fuck. Like, I want whatever reminds me of my dad, like. Or my mom or yeah. my brother. Like, I want the stuff that, like, it could be their clothes. It could be, like, something that smells like them. Something that gives their essence, you know? Not a fucking, oh, I want my dad's fucking bank account. And yeah. I want his truck. But check this out, this though. Shit. Right the moment he dies. Like, no. Yeah. Fucking throw that shit away. I don't yeah. care. I don't care. That is true. But, like, in this situation, though, like, the way I think of it is, like, okay, the dude is, like, he's probably been told his whole life, like, like, hey, um. You're going to be king one day. Hey, son, you need to learn the ropes. You're going to be king one day. And then all of a sudden, he's like 50 years old. Hey, son, you need to learn the ropes. And he's like, okay, mom, I heard that 40 years ago. And then (laughs) next thing you know, he's like, I'm sure he's like 70 something, but that motherfucker look old. And like, (laughs) hey, son, did you learn the ropes? And he's like, oh, hell no. This bitch still going to stay alive. And I ain't going to even get to be king. Bro, so you've been thinking the whole life, your whole life, that you're gonna be king when your mom passed away, and seventy years old, dude. Believe it or not, people are dropping at, from seventy and up. Life expectancy actually in a lot of places from sixty to seventy years old. So he's thinking like, "Fuck, dude, my mom's gonna fucking outlive me, and I didn't even get to be king." I mean, he's kind of put in a tough predicament. You know what I'm saying like, <laughs> I don't, okay, I don't give a fuck about politics. I mean, Queen Elizabeth, whatever. I'm sure to a certain degree, like, it should matter to everybody because they're a superpower and it could affect however they react or whatever course they take. Oh, I guess that's but true. It is kind of fucking like, oh, shit, dude. Like, this fucking dude's been waiting his whole goddamn life. And damn, dude, he, he thought he probably wasn't going to make it there, man. Like, that's fucking crazy, dude. I don't know. Yeah, man, I, I can't. I, I got no... uh. Nothing to share in regards to the royal family. I just know the actress that's with the one guy, right? What's the... Meghan Markle. Yeah. Just because I saw her in that show Suits. It was about uh, lawyers. You never saw that show? It was no. It was an okay... <laughs> it was an okay show. It was about a guy that he's not... He doesn't even have a... a, a what's it called? A, he, didn't, he didn't even go to law school. And he's just a, like a super genius, and he's friends with the guy. I think it's a lawyer. He's magically a lawyer. Huh? And he become he goes to a law firm, and he becomes a lawyer. He like fakes that he's a lawyer, and he's like becomes some badass attorney, right? Wow, Prince Harry, you could have done a little bit better <laughs> and gotten a more <laughs> reputable fucking actress. Okay, but that that actress was in it. So <laughs> once I saw that she married the royal, I'm like, eh. 
Oh, dude. Yeah. I have to tell you about this, dude. Earlier, I seen this fucking thing, right? On Snapchat, this article. It's uh, Jennifer Lawrence is pissed as fuck that she didn't make as much money as Leo in a certain movie. I forget, I don't even know what movie it is, but she's mad that she that she made five million less than Leo. Oh, I'm like, bitch, is you that, stupid? Was it that end of the? Yeah, I'm like, bitch, you didn't make no Titanic, bitch. You didn't make no Gilbert Grape, bitch. No Django, bitch. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Wait. Hunger Games was the only thing you made that was great. Like, get the fuck out of here, bitch. Try, get the and then, fuck out yeah, of get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Yeah, and it's like, and that depends but on her. This is Leonardo How... DiCaprio. Yeah, I know, dude. Leo Are you is talking like about the one word with that Jonah Hill's in. That, that don't look up. I'm not sure, but she was mad that she, she was in that with him and Jonah Hill. Yeah, and then they're trying to bring in this whole fucking like, oh, uh, I'm a female and I got less to him. That's bullshit. Like, no, dude, he's more experienced. Look, I'm gonna tell you something right it now. It has nothing to do with sex. No, dude, experience matters. Because if you had, matters. if you had an actress, say. Let's see an example. An older actress, say like um, Meryl Streep is good. There you go. I was gonna say Meryl Streep. You just yeah. took it out of my mouth. Woo! Woo! Yeah. No. I don't know. I didn't watch that movie, but I know that that was bullshit when she said that. Bless you. Oh. Bless you. Thank you. COVID. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Meryl Streep. If you had an actress like that, with her, okay. All right. They're gonna get paid about the same. Right. Yeah, even then, Leo, man, it's fucking but you're Leo. Gonna pick a younger, younger girl, younger actress. It's a great actress. She's been in some good movies, but Leonardo DiCaprio has been in some of the best movies of all time. Leo is honestly, he's bro. Top dog. He's the goat of his generation. I have a Leo story, dude. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So, is Leo a nice guy, or what do you think? He's a very pleasant man. Yeah? <laughs> yes. And said in, in a, what way? In a, <laughs> very, in a very special way. <laughs> Okay, no, no. how's he pleasant? Um, no, we were in New York. Uh, this is when Emilio was out there for school, and uh, me and my dad we were just walking. I don't know if it was through East Village or where where in New York we were, but there was like this like abandoned looking building. I'm sure there was some kind of a, I'm sure there was some kind of event in there. Like there's that's how New York is. Like there's like random little spot that they have like art show or some shit like that. But we we're just walking with my dad. Um, and I think Emilio was with my with our uncle Felipe. I don't know if I don't know where the hell they were, but they're on the other side of town. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was looking at a church for some wedding that was coming up. Whatever it was, we were just walking right down the street. I don't know where we were, somewhere in New York City, near East Village. We're walking, and I'm like, what the fuck? Is that Leonardo DiCaprio? I just looked at my dad, I'm like, is that Leonardo DiCaprio? We're literally cr like approaching a crosswalk, like crossing a street, a side street, and it's Leonardo DiCaprio, dude. He had a beard, he had glasses on, and um, he was a little like he had like kind of like a belly. He was a, a little out of shape, but, but that it was him, dude. Yeah. And right away, my dad's like, "Oh shit!" He's like, "Oh, Leo." And my dad's like, "Leo, we're we're your big we're your biggest fans." You know, my dad, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my dad, dude. Yeah. We're your biggest fans, and Leo was like. And Leo was like, thank you. Like, he just told us. He like, went like that? Yeah, he's like. Fucking asshole. No, 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 no. Like, he, he went like, oh, thank you. Like, he appreciated the fact that we said yeah, that. Yeah, but he went like this, like, oh, okay, oh, back yeah. away. No, no. Yeah, he did a back away? No, no, I, no, I said, no. man, He obviously fuck wanted you. it to be discreet. Yeah, oh, okay. He didn't want oh, like, hey, don't say shit. Yeah, he oh, was no. trying to. Hey, your dad was like, it's Leo, guys. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. It's him, look. We were pretty discreet about it when we, when we said hi to him. But, dude, it was him. I'm like, fuck. We. We've all grown up watching this fucking guy on in movies and shit, dude. And to see this guy walk in the show, I'm like, fuck, this is a badass actor, dude. But I gotta say, he's a fucking retard. If he uh, he thinks that um, if he thinks that no one is gonna be like, oh my god, it's Leo. If you're in the most populated city in the fucking United States, nah, in fucking dude, New York, everybody, dog. Check you know, it out. This is a word yeah, that dude. we, it's we Leo, call it, bro. We call each other cutie. So, oh you guys yeah, will get, get the idea. Because I'm cute. Because we, and he's cute. It just came about. One time when we were younger, I think I was in high school. Yeah, we yeah we were in high school, and you you made up that name for me. I think, yeah, I don't know how the fucking name came about, but we call each other cutie. Um, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you're like way to way to make it awkward as fuck, Hector. Right you don't have to share anything. Dude. I don't even feel cute anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, no, the other. DiCaprio was nice, but I understand, like, in New York City, it's 
constant traffic. There's a shit ton of fucking people walking the streets. So you yeah. can't like people blend in. But obviously the people that know, no. Just like I knew what Leonardo DiCaprio looked like. And when I saw him, I knew that was Leonardo DiCaprio. There was no denying it. I'm like, that was Leonardo DiCaprio. Dude, I got okay. Now that we're talking about New York, I gotta like I, I was working in uh in Maryland New York and shit. City in the house. Huh? Yeah, New York, on New York City. City. Yeah, I was working out there and shit. And um, dude, I mean, I went to go visit New York a couple times, and uh, I want to say it ain't like the fucking movies, man. It ain't like the fucking movies, guys. I want, dude. What, wait, what does the movies? What, what do the movies show you that New York isn't? I remember watching Spider Man and shit, and um, he's in in Times Square. You got New York oh, City Tom right Hanks? behind you, right there. <laughs> Oh, New York. <laughs> yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. Times Square. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look like that guy at all. It's fucking, uh, there's like 40 more rats, some homeless in there. Uh, it just looks grayer and dirtier. And <laughs> it's cool. Trash bags everywhere. <laughs> I, I like it. I feel like I blended right in. But yeah, still, it's shitty, dude. No, nah, dude, look, check this out. I remember watching Spider Man and shit, right? And um, yeah, dude, I remember like seeing like Peter Parker getting dumped by Mary Jane. In the fucking bridge. I'm like, damn, Central Park was fucking sick. I remember uh, Home Alone, the lady throwing the fucking, the fucking, uh, what is, I don't know what the fuck she throws to the pigeons or whatever by the bridge. Dude, I went by that exact same area, right? Is that Central Park? Oh, what's it called? Grand Central Park or Grand? Central Park, yeah. Is Central Park? Okay, yeah, it yeah. is Central Park, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. So, um, dude, let me tell you this, dude. We had just came out of Times Square, bro. We we're all pumped up. We're like, yeah, fuck yeah, we're gonna go by. You know, by Central Park, blah, blah, blah. Do we go in there, dude? We get a fucking ice cream cone. We're all happy and shit. You know, my wife, my kids. Dude, we turn the fuck around, dude. I swear to God, dude. There's this fucking homeless guy <laughs> fucking taking a shower, butt naked with his fucking dirty ass pee pee and, and, and showering in a fucking pillar. In a fucking pillar, dude. Like a, like a fucking stone pillar filled with rainwater, I would assume. That fucking water was dirty, black, shitty as hell. And he's all rubbing his nasty ass fucking armpits. And, dude, I'm like, oh, dude, I didn't want to eat my fucking ice cream anymore. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, maybe we go in a little bit deeper. It's better. And I was about to ask you, isn't there more that happened when you're in New York? <laughs> dude, no, dude. New York, dude, is a trip, bro. Look, I don't give a fuck what you wear, what you are, what your fucking pronoun is. I don't care. It was trippy, dude. I'm like, all right. How do you know you're in New York without without saying you're in New York? Actually, I do have to say it. <laughs> Dude, okay. It's crazy. First thing that happened, we got to New York, and um, we parked on, like, 47th Street by Times Square, I think. I don't know. <laughs> that is, right? 47th, 47th Street? Street? That's here in Chicago, dude. Oh, no. That's La Cuarentena. We, we used to live on no, 47th no, no, no. I don't call the Chicago 47th Street 47th Street. I call it La 47. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? That's the difference. <laughs> nah, dude. We we're in 47th Street in New York, right? Dude, the moment I got off to pay the fucking um the parking or whatever, um, dude, first thing I saw was some buff ass dude. Buff ass dude with long hair, like to his shoulder, dude. And I think he had like some sort of makeup on and a dress and heels. And it was some buff ass motherfucker, like six five. And, and like motherfucker look like Patrick and shit. Dude, I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, that's the <laughs> first thing I saw. I'm like, all right, it's New York City, dude. Like, get ready, guys. We're going to see some shit today. And that's what... And he might have not even been gay. I don't know. He might have just been a New Yorker, bro. Dude, yeah. No, it's so New trippy York, out there, that's dude. That's the one thing I I appreciate what New York is because of the fact that it's not segregated, dude. Like, no one gives a fuck, right? It's not... Well, I'm sure people give a fuck. Some people, ah, dude, you see like yeah. dudes in suits right next to a homeless guy in yeah. Times Square, dude. You don't see that in Chicago. Chicago is so segregated. Yeah, dude, it is 100 percent so, by class, by race, by everything. So segregated, but New York, that's the one thing that I'm like, fuck, New York. It's food, the food is so. Uh, there's a lot of good food out there, but it's diverse. I'm sure there's racist people everywhere. Oh yeah, New York. You go further north, I'm sure, and you. There's some racist people. Yeah, go towards Canada. No, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, New York is fucking beautiful, dude. I love New York. It was cool. It was a good experience. Uh, I love graffiti and shit. So I like it. I like the urban life, bro. I I don't give a fuck that there was a rat like the size of a cat right next to me, <laughs> and I put a leash on it and walked it down in the park and shit. But um, uh, I don't mind that. It, it that's fine with me, dude. I I like the dirtiness. I I like the 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 the. 
don't know, it just looked old as fuck. It looked you, cool. It you looked wouldn't historic. live there, though. I probably would, honestly. You would? Yeah, I probably would, but maybe not anymore. All this shit going on with, like, the whole COVID and all that. You just never know how shit might happen. And I don't know. Yeah, dude, because COVID. Just cause it's so overpopulated, right? Like, it's so. No, not even that. Just yeah. that, like, I know, like, right now, like, there's certain states that have, like, more, um, like, more freedoms. And some have, more like, more restrictions. And, like, I don't, like I said, I don't buy into politics. But I do want what's best for me, what's best for my life. I want to be a little more free and shit. Cause, hey, man, why are you being so selfish? What's best for you? Uh, what yes. about us, man? Oh yeah, sorry. What's best what for my? What about f- the common people, man? Uh, you know, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Yolo. <laughs> nah, dude. Fuck no. Fuck you, people. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not saying nah, I'm okay, killing anyone else, but it's, yeah, it's I mean, around. you you will blend in with some people better in other states than others. I don't know. Um, uh, but um, uh, yeah, dude. I mean, New York. New York was a trip, though, bro. It it was fun, though. It was cool. It was a good experience, but. I don't know, bro. I, I love Chicago. I went to a Joe's Pizza where Spider Man was doing the deliveries and shit. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. I remember uh, my cuñada's uh, my cuñada's boyfriend at the time was like, she he had told us like, hey, you guys gotta go Joe's Pizza. It's like legendary. I'm like, I love it. I was like, we'll go, we'll go check it out. Whatever. It's legendary. And I'm like, That's whoa. A big word, dude. Yeah, no, dude. It's legendary. The only reason why. It's because they got like 40 fucking celebrities pictures on the fucking wall that been there. But that means that those motherfuckers know what the fuck. That's, that's half the places in New York. Yeah. Dude. But what that tells me is celebrities don't have good taste in fucking food. Honestly. Bro, we went there, dude. It was good. It was all right. Yeah, but, they yeah I know. Like, yeah. They took a picture. Like, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, celebrities. Yeah. Man. Who doesn't want to try it after Drake tried it? After De Niro, DiCaprio. Like, yeah. Like, we got all the did in there. You know what I'm saying? Nah, dude. I go to any corner uh, pizzeria right in Chicago, and it's automatically better, in my opinion. You know, we got better oh, sauce, dude, better that, cheese, better that, fucking crust. That's a huge argument for some people, dude. I know, dude, but, you and know, fuck them, whatever, no you know? There's no comparison. It's two different types of pizza. Like, there may be a good slice in the, over there, and I'll accept it as a New York slice. But Chicago has the best fucking pizza. It does, right? I'm not crazy, right? It I have does, a good dude. taste in food, man. I love I good pe- food and I, I hate people, shitty food. I don't know if people are assuming like, oh, Chicago, it's all about that you're down on stuff. No, not stuffed crust. We're talking about Chicago. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Mom crust, and pop pizzeria, pizza. baby. Right? It could be a, just a cheese pizza, whatever you want to get on it. It's for, it's no, you can't compare anywhere you go. Yeah, I know people in the country. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like I remember. Okay, so where I work, dude, I work with people from out of town all the fucking time. So when they come here, they're like, "Oh, dude, we went to Giordano's." And I'm like, "Yes, Giordano's is fucking great. The deep dish is awesome. There, even the regular pizza is great." But that doesn't mean it's, uh, you know, the epitome of Chicago pizza. Chicago pizza is like a general term, like the way I look at it, at least. Like, dude, Pilsen's got some good, sh- some good shit, you know. Like, Little Village, fucking uh, Bryant Park, you know, back of the yards, just anywhere you go in Chicago. I- I'm not, I'm a South Side. I don't know shit about the North Side. I don't know the North Side of Chicago, but I know my South Side. And I'm, I'm telling sure you, there's good pizzas there too. But yeah, just anywhere Chicago is any little mom and pop corners place is good. The taquerias, if you go to taqueria. And uh, they have groceries and fucking Mexican candy, and and they have a taqueria all the way in the back. Then there's fire, so you know that's you the know good, it's shit. good shit. Yeah, yeah. If you go to a place that's just literally a taqueria, like you might have, you should have second doubts. <laughs> it's fifty fifty, yeah. Yeah, but if you see, um, you know, like the fucking botes, the the detergent that are all watered down, don't even work. And you see them in the back, and you know, you see like the Mexican candies and all that shit, like. And, and you see the taquero with like one little tiny table there where you barely fit in there. Like you're gonna about to get some. You fire, best believe dude. it's gonna be delicious. Yeah, you're yeah. gonna get some fucking straight fire. That's just a rule of thumb for me. That's how I look at it. I've been to fancy ass restaurants and they taste like just bland. Just I don't know, just shitty food, dude. I don't know. Yeah, that's why I tend to like with my wife. I tend to we stick to the places that we know. Like, and you just keep you cycle through those places, you know. Like, oh, this is where we get the best Chinese food. Oh, this is where we get the best pizza. Sometimes that may change over time if the place, for some reason, the food stops being the same quality, you know? Yeah. And it's happened. But you stick to the same places. And if you try a new place and if it's good, okay, you add it to the list. But tr- that's what I try to, yeah, I try to stick to that. Like, we're stick to the same places so that I'm not disappointed 
and not feeling like I wasted money on a shit meal. Yeah. What was I gonna say? Oh, oh this is what I, this, this thought came to me because of the pizza talk. Deep dish. Did Giordano's create that, or were other pizza places in Chicago doing that before Giordano's became a thing? I'm pretty sure Giordano's isn't the creator. main creator. Never, never. Emilio, can you please do that research for us? Yeah, dude. I don't think so. But while he looks that up, I do have a question for you, dude. What? So, you know, you're, you're from your Mexican roots. Bloody roots. Pizzeria Uno? What's it called? Read it. All right. So. Read them and weep. Chicago was home to a thriving community of first and second generation descendants. Dude, who the fuck is it, bro? Eventually, two entrepreneurs, Ike Soul and Rick Ricardo, decided to create something different, an Italian-American version of pizza. And this doesn't... Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Italian cuisine and opened up Pizzeria Uno in Chicago in 1943. All right. So I guess those I'm are the creators. There tomorrow, dude. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean it's going to be better, though. Pizzeria Uno created the deep dish. I'm going to tell you something, I want to try it now. Yeah, dude. Like, some people, they invent shit, and then other people, they fucking just make that invention a thousand times better than the actual inventor it's fucking crazy just the uh, innovation is key to everything but dude it's wild that when people tourists say tourists when they come to chicago they're going to two when it comes to pizza they're going to specifically two places Luvanati's or giordano's and those are two different type of deep dish Luminati's i <laughs> <laughs> I'm with I'm with you on that, dude. <laughs> ah, dude, I'm pissed that there's this guy. <laughs> dude, there's this guy. I agree 100, yeah. percent dude. What's this guy from Barstool or whatever? Uh, I don't know. I think his name is Dave or some shit. I'm not a huge fan of that guy, but me, yeah. I mean, I don't give it. You know, I just seen that he did a podcast that said, um, like he came to Chicago and tried out the pizza, the best pizza in Chicago, and I don't know whoever the fuck named it the best. It's probably some fucking stupid little hipster motherfucker, but. Yeah, but I was like, dude, I was like, that's not the best pizza, bro. Like, I'm telling you, like, a mom and pop place will give you better fucking pizza, bro. Dude, I was in Maryland, dude, and I'm telling you right now, bro. No pizza, Maryland and, and uh, Mass, Massachusetts, when I visited Massachusetts, when I visited Maryland, when I visited New York, bro, mom and pop places, that's where it's at. And I'm telling you, neither of them, neither of those three states I just mentioned, either Arizona either, because I visited Arizona too. None of those places have the mom and pop um flavor of Chicago. And every mom and pop place, they all have different flavors and they're all so fucking great. I don't know, dude. And and it's funny, dude, because not even all of them are Italians. You have like Mexican families, um, like Mexican mom and pop uh pizzerias making some straight fire. Yeah, not I even have, Italian dude anymore, a, dude. A high school friend, um, yeah, no, I haven't spoken to him since, yeah, probably high school a little bit after that. But uh, they had a pizza place, and they're Mexican. They're full blown, hundred percent. Was it good? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Good Mexican food. Danny's. I think I'm gonna give him a shout out. Danny's Pizza. Hopefully, Danny's they're Pizza. Still, yeah, they're still around. But yeah, um, I think that was what it was called. But yeah, no, no, it was over um, countryside, Lagrange area. I want to say. Uh yeah. Here's the question talking, for you. Though. We're referencing to Illinois. Let's make some noise, Illinois. Or if you say it in in the in the paisa style, Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> hey, dude. But my question for you was, um, so your your roots, your Mexican roots are Jalisco, right? So like, well, our Mexican roots are Jalisco, right? So your girl, she's from where in Mexico? Uh, uh, her family is Michoacan. So who do you think throws down more on the kitchen? That's what I want to oh, know. Dude. That's what I want to fucking know, dude, because I know Michoacan is super indigenous. Honestly. And the, the, the indigenous people, man, shit, I don't know, bro. They be cooking some they crazy ass shit. They be yeah. snapping. They be capping. Yeah, they be dude. Happening, yeah, dude. Thing, like, bang, don't make wham. grass taste good. Don't make grass taste good. They'll throw that shit with some salsa in there and like Isalo and boom. Well, I can tell you baby. from experience now since I've been with my wife. And we when we were dating that yeah that I got it's a different it's a different type of uh cooking but man fucking Damn. good dude 
Yeah, like, dude. It's especially, tough, I never had le- legit real mole. So I met my wife. For real? Boom. Dude. Yeah, fire. You'll have to try it one day. But I'm down for that. <laughs> I, got, I, I was walked through the steps of how to make it. Man, yeah, no, it's a process, but dude, that's like made from scratch. Yeah, because our shit is kind of similar to theirs because we're like borderline. But if you go like further into Michoacan, then they start kind of having more different shit. But like, like if uh, you borderline Jalisco and Michoacan is kind of like, I don't know, dude, like they don't have some similarities and shit. Because if you go northern Jalisco, they don't know what the fuck we be doing out there. It's like, there's oh, similarities, it's but there's also big differences too. Yeah. Because I see it like even with certain dishes that um, say like my grandmother would make compared to my suegra, like it's like, oh shit, like there's certain seasonings or certain things that they make that are, yeah, it's different flavors, you know? Yeah. Both good, but yeah, different for sure. Yeah, dude, because straight out, dude, when I got with my wife, dude, like, I don't know, bro. I fucking love her. I fucking love you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love you. I fucking the teddy love bear. You, Play time, my bear. No. <laughs> That's we gotta all. add that video to to this to this maybe at the end to show a little clip of that guy so they they can see what we're talking about. A reference. Is this dude that he got left by his girl and he fucking he lost it. He yeah, lost control. It's he, everybody experiences. He's that. basically the founder of podcast, so <laughs> we all deserve to give him a moment of silence. <laughs> Let's give, a, yeah, a moment of silence for our guy, whatever for, his name was. For my dead fame, home. I fucking <laughs> love you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, for real though. Like, I tried their food and it's fucking fire, bro. The Durango people, shout out, man, dude, it's fire. It's different. So, what's a dish that say you're not used to? Or that you oh, never dude. had that you had with. I with didn't even have to family. think about it. I didn't even think about what? it. I got like three or four different ones. Okay, so number one, my favorite one. This one is so simple and it's so fucking fire, dude. So my suegra she makes um spaghetti with chile poblano. Oh my my suegro does that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, dude! It's, it's so green. Delicious, right? It's green spaghetti. They throw some carrots in there. Oh man, dude, it's fucking amazing. That's number one. All right. Wait, number no, two? I'm thinking chipotle. That's another one, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that sounds like yeah. it would be fire yeah. too. But no, yeah, no, yeah, it's, no, yeah dude, it's green. Dude, it's fucking amazing. It's the best. So check this out. That's number one. Number two, like, dude, for, for the last seven years that I've been with my girl, dude, I've gone so hard on the gorditas, dude. I gone so fucking hard. Like, that's probably why You're I'm becoming a gordita, right? I'm gonna go, yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah, dude. I'm like, I'm walking around like Kanye West and Lil Pump. <laughs> Kanye West and Lil Pump in that video. Nah, dude. I I swear to God, ever since I got with Yadira, like I fucking gained, um, I don't know, dude, like maybe like 60 pounds. You're like, thanks, babe. I'm like, who? <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she's going to be like Norbit. No, I like that. <laughs> no, I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> Nah, dude. And then my second one is, um, it's, uh. Her name was Raspusha. <laughs> No, I'm Raspusha. No, <laughs> no, no. The the fucking character. Hey, don't give me trouble, dude. No, I'm saying the character. <laughs> dude, relax. Dude, you fucking kill me, bro. Relax. No, I'm saying Never the character from, from the Eddie Murphy movie. Her name was Raspusha. Yeah. His dude. wife or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it was. But, dude. Nah, dude. So, the second one. Okay, I need to say this already, man. Fuck. Oh, uh, yeah, dude. It's chicken. It's, it's pollo in um, chile poblano, too. And it's like an aguisado with chile poblano. It's like a like a puree, like a puree. I don't know yeah. how to say it in English or whatever. You said it, per- you said it perfectly. Yeah, dude, with some fucking nice Milagro tortillas. Shout out to Chicago people, man. Uh, Milagro tortillas are the best. I've been around. And they, don't I'm have, you, they don't have the best rep after COVID. Bro, like if but, I moved yeah. to another part of the country, I would 100% go on the Milagro website if they have one and deliver a whole box of tortillas. They, cause do, they don't do that, I don't think. But you can have your family mail it to you. Dude, I'll fucking, I don't know. I'll order through Amazon and they order, they deliver every fucking thing. I don't know, dude. But the best tortillas, that's number two, dude. Oh no, number two was gorditas. <laughs> yeah, that's number three. Those are the three already that I've mentioned already so far. There is fucking fire, dude. That's the best tortilla of all time, dude. And guess what? what? We're probably some other state in the U.S. will probably be like, "Nah, this is the best tortilla." Well, they're wrong, they bro. They need to try this fucking tortilla. No, el milagro in is Mexico the best. Want that tortilla? Yeah. Well, I worked with a lot of guys from Texas, dude, and so those guys. 
Their main thing is um, it's crazy, dude, because like northern Mexico and southern U.S., they have like so much in common. Um, northern Mex northern Mexicans, like for example, um, the the people from Durango, like my, like uh, my wife's family, they love the flour tor tortilla. They love flour tortillas, dude. And guess what, dude? Um, the people I worked with are from um, they're from Coahuila, so it's a northern state also. It is, it, you know, it's in the border. Dude, they love flour tortillas, dude. And then and then all the Texas people, oh. flour tortillas. And they are fire, though. They're fire. But, dude, for me, just corn tortilla, milagro tortillas is, is the best. For me, it, it hits the spot, yeah. But flour tortillas also, like, you need to try my sweet I'm, I'm a hypocrite, dude, because I don't really eat tortillas. For real? Damn. I'll That's eat crazy, it. Say, dude. dude, if I'm having, now that I eat meat again, if I'm having carnitas, something where it's like steak, yeah, and a taco is the fucking bomb dude hell yeah but uh i'm about to cut this guys uh i really gotta take a piss but um uh, i hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast um and uh i'm sorry for making you guys hungry um yeah go go get yourself some good fucking food guys <laughs> we might continue right you think we'll continue today yes i just gotta take a little breather all right we're gonna take a little pause no, we didn't. B but I will Business with my dad after he sees this. <laughs> so traditional, traditional. I always got to talk about the times I pissed off my dad or the times that, I don't know, it's just like a Pepito story. You know what I'm saying? That's how we see it in the Golinas fam. What's Pepito, dude? You got to explain that to people because not the non, uh, yeah, you know, the Hispanic, the Spanish speakers might not, the non Spanish speakers might not know what Pepito. I'm gonna tell you the truth. So, yeah. guys, um, I'd rather not explain Pepito because uh, it's just, search uh, it online. Google it's it. just as complicated as trigonometry, okay? Because um, there is a secret um, alternative language in within the Mexican people called Albur, and uh, I suck at it, and uh, people always screw me over at work with it, and um, it's so hard to explain it. Um, I don't even know what Albur is. No? You got to search it up. Dude, so Albur is like... And I'm not trying to detract you from your story, so go on to your story after you... All right, yeah. okay. Just search up Albur, guys, and then... And Pepito. And Pepito, and then if you guys got any questions, let us know. <laughs> Put a comment or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, but... The funniest shit, dude. The funniest shit. Traditional, right? Traditional shit right here. I remember one time, dude. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing up the story is because earlier uh, I was kind of shaving my beard. And, you know, lining up this fresh you, ass. You're trying to look cute for the podcast. I was trying to look fresh. And um, so what I did was last time I left a sideburn. And my wife kept saying, like, dude, what the fuck is that sideburn? <laughs> What the, that, sh that looks like a piece of shit in your cheek, dude. <laughs> oh, so say like your head, like this is nice and clean, right? And you had a patch of sideburn right here? Yeah, like I, yeah. Had, I had the sideburn all squared and shit looking like, I don't know, dude, looking fucking goofy as hell. You're, so You were looking like Elvis, dude. Yeah, I was looking like Elvis. And my wife was like, bro, like why did he do that? So then I'm like, all right, whatever, man. So I come out here last week, but, you know, kind of grew in a little bit, but I had to shave. So I'm like, fuck it, you know, I'm going to kind of do what the barbers do and kind of taper it, I guess, but with no fucking machine, just the fucking razor. Yeah, it turns out I look fucking stupid as hell. Me I fucked up my hair, whatever. You went apocalypto on it, dude. I went apocalypto, but that's exactly <laughs> what I'm heading to. So then I, all I could think of was a time when my dad went apocalypto. <laughs> dude, I remember one time, dude. I was all chilling at the house and shit, you know, all relaxed, having a good time with Yadira, you know, watching the movie, whatever. Bro, my dad, I'm going to tell you guys, okay, uh, traditional old school Mexican parents, they love saving a buck, man. That's just the truth. That don't mean they're cheap. It just means that they are very efficient. <laughs> so the dude, he's like, you know, told this girl, he's like, hey, I get a basic haircut. Just cut my hair. Cut my hair and I'll, I'll give you the money. Fuck it. Why not? Fuck me up, fam. Uh, he's like, nah, you can't fuck me up. It's all right. <laughs> ah, dude. I believe in you. Bro, she cut my, my, my dad's girl cut his hair, bro. My dad thought he was like Mr. Fresh looking all sexy and shit. <laughs> he walks in the fucking room. He's like, oh, Noel. Mira, Ana me cortó el pelo. Le quedó bien, right? 
I'm looking at her from the phone like, damn, dog, she's snapping, dude. She, I'm going to come out here with her. And he turns around. <laughs> dude, he had his fucking hairline, like right here, dude, by his by the top of his ear. Like, dude, I'm like, what the fuck, bro? I'm like, dad. <laughs> Your dad's going to kill you. <laughs> dude, dude, I swear to God, I pissed my pants a little, dude. I couldn't stop cracking up. My dad's like, gay. ¿Qué? ¿Qué pasó? Oh, the, the poor dude didn't even know what the fuck his hair looked like, bro. He thought he looked fresh. Dude. He thought he was a shit, dude. So you couldn't control yourself in that moment. You laughed. Oh, fuck no, I couldn't control. I almost shit myself, as a matter of fact. Dude, the guy had his hairline. Like, look, where are my eyeballs at? Yeah, imagine that in the back of your head. Dude. I, oh. Dude. Yeah, first thing I thought, like, dude, this man could have been like a, like a Indio from like the 1500s. He looked fucked up, dude. <laughs> And I'm like, eh, it looks good, Dad. Dude, it's I just cracked funny that you said up, the dude. moment that you saw him from the front. You're like, fuck, man. Snap. Like, it looks fucking good. But then you got to the back. And oh, like, dude, I'm like, dude, this guy went to, like, uh, you know, those estheticas or whatever. They got those uh, For, like, uh, professional ass bougie-ass moms and shit. Those bougie-ass Mexican moms cutting their fucking hair. I'm like, no, oh, it was all right. It's it good, you know? He turned around, dude. Man, they fucked that dude up, man. I felt so bad for me. I cracked the fuck up, dude. My dad got pissed, dude. He didn't even finish his conversation. He left upstairs mad as fuck because I kept cracking up. And I feel so bad. I'm, I, I know people, you guys don't think I'm a moral prick, but. You couldn't control it. I couldn't control it. It was funny. And you know what's crazy, dude? Like, this seems so fucked up, but I was like, I think I was like the definition of Dennis the Menace. And my little brother was like uh, just a follow-up, dude. He was just the same shit, dude. Um, and I'm sure this happens to everyone else. But, like, my dad, he's just like a grumpy lovable older guy i don't know he's just just like the guy from dennis the menace dude so like when something like when some sort of like clumsiness happens i just can't help it but laugh when shit goes wrong i'm sorry that i love you but this is the truth um so this one time that's, dude that's what it is being a dad dude your kids find humor and your misfortune oh yeah dude my my son like when 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 <laughs> my wife bi uh bitches me out or something or or something goes wrong, my son was like, ha, 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 ha. I'm like, you little fuck. Like, you're three years old. How do you know? What the fuck, dude? He's like, you pissed my mom off. Yeah, he's like, ha, ha. You ain't getting no ass house. today. <laughs> no ass for you today. <laughs> yeah, dude, no. But, um, uh, so check this out, dude. We're in the garage, right? And uh, my dad, dude, I was like fucking, my, I've always been helping on my dad, even though I probably made it worse. But I, I tried helping him out. He always be like, hey, man, have you done, man? Whatever. So we went to the garage and um, it's like the little kid holding the flashlight. Yeah, I know, dude. That, right? yeah. It's like like <laughs> fucking cheap labor ass bullshit, dude. Like, hey man, fuck this. I'm gonna just get my son to help me. He's only ten years old, but he could do it. Whatever. So we went to the garage. He wanted me to help him out with some shit. I forgot. Whatever. It's good though, man. It's a good learning experience. I love that he did that to me, right? But, anyways, I'm watching him do whatever he's doing, bro. The man drops the drill. The drill falls right on his fucking toe, dude. <laughs> what is he wearing? Not steel toe. <laughs> dude, I couldn't stop fucking cracking up, dude. My dad was like, oh, he was, he was fucking jumping around, dude. Fucking mad as fuck. And, dude, I just, I don't know, dude. I'm just a horrible human being. I see someone get hurt, like, in a, in a not in a dangerous way, like, not in a fatal way. But, but in a funny way. I see someone get hurt, someone fall off a chair, some, I don't know, dude. Don't fall off a ladder. I just laugh. want to fucking laugh. And I fucking, dude, my dad was so fucking pissed, dude. And that that's just the way it fucking is. Like, every time to this day, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when my dad does something clumsy, I just want to fucking crack up, dude. It's just like, I don't know, dude. And it's going to haunt me back because I know my son's going to be the same way with me, dude. Yep. It's fucking crazy. That's how it works. Like, no, dude. It, and it's it happens, dude, with, with dad, especially, like, when your dad gets mad. For some reason, sometimes it's funny, dude. There's times where I would be with my dad and say, like, if I went to work with him right in the summer, I was usually in the summertime. My dad would take us like to job sites with him and we would help him with like, like measy shit. For the most part, we would stand around, dude, and kind of just fuck around wherever. Easy money, baby. We were like that. <laughs> we have lunch with my dad and go home. And yeah. But on some occasions where my dad would be getting frustrated, right? With like fucking like. <laughs> I can't so, imagine you guys laughing. <laughs> dude, my dad will be getting frustrated with some shit. Like, because my dad's a perfectionist. He's like, he must make sure that shit comes out good. Um, all his electrical work. And sometimes shit's just, just not panning out. How about a little shout out? A little shout out. Shout out to G Electric. G Electric. My dad's company. Um, 
but yeah, no, dude, anytime things wouldn't pan out, my dad would go into like a fucking just swearing fit. Like he'll just, he'll be in the middle of something and be like, Hija de su pinche puta bomba, perra, bomba, wanga, bomba, perra, puta, bomba, madre. And yeah, it, oh, yeah. And it'd be a whole fucking, like, a string of... Yeah, they say them shady, that shit. <laughs> Yo, that's true. <laughs> yeah, they do but that. But, dude, those moments, I'll be like, fuck, dude. Like, I'll try to calm my dad down. Hey, dad, calm down. No, don't tell me to calm down. Like, okay. And oh, then, yeah, dude. But that anger would fuel him to finish that shit. So then I'll be like, you know what? I stand corrected, dad. It worked out for him. Keep swearing your ass off while you're doing your job. Yeah, dude. It's crazy because I, I worked at El Veneno, the seafood place. When you go eat there, it's heaven. When you work there, it's fucking hell. I'll tell you that right now. It. I was like, what, 16 years old? Dude, I worked there for two, three weeks. And that was only in the weekends. You were a dishwasher, no? Yes, I was. <laughs> dude, I was everything. Dude, check this out. The cooks in the back. Hey, hey. ¿Qué estás haciendo? Dude, I had like a whole rack full of dishes, dude. He's like, hey, and, and then the ollas too. That's not including the ollas. And dude, and then he's like, hey, hey, pinche morro, ¿qué estás haciendo? Ándale, al emperar acá. Dude, I go there like their bitch, dude, cleaning their shit. Okay, okay, I voy. And then, and then when how, they, how old were you when you were doing that? Job? Sixteen, dude. So I'm like, okay, okay. I'm all cleaning it, dude. All traumatized. I felt like I was in fucking a uh, boot camp. You're like, I don't want to get fired. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, dude. I need the money. So I'm like, I'll clean that shit out, dude. Boom, 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 boom. And then, uh, right when I'm done, hey, hey, ¿qué estás haciendo? Andale, a pelar los camarones, dude. I'm over there peeling them. Shit, I'm like, okay, dude. dude. My and they're freezing, dude. It's like you're peeling ice. It's cold, dude. So uh, my hands are fucking. Like freezing, dude. I'm like peeling them shrimps. I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> you know, fucking throwing them bitches in there, dude. So I do that, and then guess what, dude? Like, I'm like, all right, man, I gotta get something. The, the, this was there was an upside to that. Every time I go clean their shit, I'm like, all right, whatever. So I grab a, oh, they have the best fries, the uh, seasoned fries. So what they do is, um, they fry their their seasoned fries in the same um frying oil. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but in the same frying oil <laughs> as they do their fish. So it has that little kind of seafood, um, you know, like it's frying delicious, taste. Dude. It's fucking fire, dude. So every time I'd go clean their shit, I grab a pile of fucking fries. I throw them on top of my dishwasher or counter, and then boom, bro, I was I was stacking like da 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 da. And after I, I, I was stacking it, pass it to the machine, boom, start washing the fucking ollas, dude. I, this was the worst experience ever. Check this out. Uh, sorry guys, my conversation might get a little X-rated, all right? A little detailed. So um, dude, I'm on washing the ollas now. You know, I'm I'm washing the dishes. Then I started washing the ollas. Boom, boom, boom. You know, the Oyas, they got to get washed by hand. There's no fucking machine for that. So I'm, dude, washing the whole stack of Oyas, which is like you see in the fucking movies, and man. It's Oyas, terrible. By Oyas, he means pots. Yeah, pots. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Spanglish. Yeah, so, dude, I'm washing them pots, dude. Dude, those pots got, you know, camarones a la diabla sauce. They got all kinds of uh, very, very spicy habanero and ghost pepper and this and that. Like, just anything that came from hell, they have it there, dude. And I'm all washing that shit, dude. And I don't have a fucking um, rubber or, or plastic apron. And all that water is fucking soaking my pants, dude. Guess what's underneath my pants? It's my genitalia, man. So, dude, I came out of that place, dude. I swear to God, bro. I'm like, dude, my, my, my weed is going to fall off. It's so spicy down there. It, Dude, it sucked, dude. It was the worst experience ever, dude. The plates, dude, they got them big-ass plates, like, from the fucking uh, The Last Supper and shit. They're, like, this fucking big. Um, dude. They're fucking heavy. They're the barro. I had to carry a whole stack of them, maybe like a 10 stack, straight to them. Dude, I was running around. It was the worst experience ever, dude. It was. And then I'm like, okay, fuck this shit, dude. It made the refinery seem like a like a walk in the park. And, dude, I not right now I kind of stopped laughing a little bit because I'm like, fuck. Then I think about it because like, I'm laughing the way you tell the story because you, you went through it. You experienced this. You have a funny, I guess, way of ex explaining it and expressing it. But, dude, I feel bad for the actual, like, the people that they got nothing bad. Like, that's their life. That's their life. And they have no better, like, well, I'm going to tell you something. Job opportunity to to do. Yeah. Other than that, dude, that, that's that got to fucking blow. Let me tell you something. Era un viejito, se llamaba Don Roy, the guy that was helping me. Guess how long he helped me for? One day. He was there for maybe a year. Don Roy was an alcoholic, dude. Uh, He'd go in the cooler and. Boom, little fireball, little whiskey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, 
and then and I'm 16. I'm like, fuck, dude, that's gonna be me next week, bro. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Don Roy, pass me that shit, son, dude. I, dude, there's no way you wouldn't become an alcoholic in that shitty ass environment, dude. And the guys, dude, I remember this is, dude, this is when I realized, like, okay, dude, this ain't like the movies, like in the training video where they have a, <laughs> the worker, like, hey, uh, Tom, let me show you how this is done. Fuck no, dude. The guy told me, hey, andale, rápido, rápido. <laughs> dude, he's like, rápido, rápido, rápido. A rellenar los vegetales allá. I'm like, uh, ¿cuáles vegetales? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, all stupid. And he's like, hey, like, what the fuck, dude? Like, he looked at me like, like, bro, like, I thought he was going to beat my ass. And I'm like, oh, wait, I forgot. This is a job. You know, he can't do that. But no, dude, I really thought, like, for a second, like, this, this dude wants to stick me or something. He's like, no, go get it over there. Dude, I went to the cooler. I, I grabbed, like, a little bowl. I filled it up. And he's like, hey, you está mamá que? What, what is this bullshit? What is this bullshit? He's like, this ain't no fucking kindergarten, dude. He's like, get your fucking ass over there. <laughs> Fill this whole fucking tray up and then replace it. Dude, I've, I thought I was going to cry, dude. I was like, damn, dude. Dude, I I never... Dude, I swear to God, bro. And I'm telling you, bro. Uh, the, the the jobs I've been at, dude, like my first refinery job, I remember we were doing scaffold, dude. The guys, dude, the, the Mexican guys, I don't know, bro. And this guy was a... He was a veteran, dude, from Mexico. Dude, I thought veterans from the U.S. were bad. This motherfucker was like, God damn, dude. Like hardcore. Dude, he was hardcore. He was a fucking bully, bro. But I guess that means uh, you're going to learn better, I guess. Dude, I remember he was like, <laughs> he was harassing the shit. He was like, hey, he's like, are you fucking stupid? Obviously in Spanish, translated or whatever. Say in Spanish. He's yeah. like, hey, hey, niño. They call me niño because I was the only, I was the youngest <laughs> guy the there. Youngest. <laughs> I was the youngest guy there. I was 18. I was the youngest guy, dude. I remember my first day, I felt like I was going to a prison or something. I had a jumpsuit fucking dirty fucking badged in robotic ass lifestyle i went in they're like oh era pinche i was like like 60 pounds less i was all skinny and shit. he's like oh era este pinche niño bro that was it el niño <laughs> they still call me that to this day when they see me yeah they call me el niño i'm like yeah fuck you motherfucker guess what bitch i ain't el niño anymore i get paid more than you now motherfucker <laughs> what bitch <laughs> yeah dude so this guy dude he was a biggest dick dude uh, i don't want to say his name but his name was carlos but um dude this Oh, <laughs> All right, pause. <laughs> you don't have to pause, dude. Huh? We could just mute that out. Yeah, yeah. All right, this motherfucker, dude. <laughs> All right, this guy Carlos, dude, was the biggest fucking prick, dude. He'd be like, Niño, no mames, Niño. No vales pa pura verga, Niño. No, no mames, with Niño. No, no sirves pa nada, Niño. Dude, I'm like. God damn, dude. I'm like, <laughs> I'm working the hardest I've ever worked. Dude, I'm like stacking and, and passing shit up, dude. Shit that's like 80 pounds, 50 you were, pounds. You were going through Navy SEAL training, dude. Dude, I'm like, dude, my bag was like, I was skinny as fuck. I'm like, I don't even know how the fuck I'm doing this. But I'm like, well, I got to get paid, so I got to do it anyways. But I'm passing that shit up, dude. I'm this, I'm that. <laughs> I'm climbing shit. I'm all tired. And, and this is like for like 10, 12 hours, sometimes even 14 hours. And I'm like, fuck, dude, this is hell, dude. <laughs> like, you know what they say? Like, when people dude. tell me, People tell me, oh, if you stay busy, don't you worry. Time will go by fast. Fuck you. No, it won't. If you're too busy, shit's going to be still in eternity, buddy. How about that? When you're carrying shit nonstop, back and forth. getting paid, dude? I, uh, actually, it wasn't that bad. It was 18 bucks an hour. Oh, okay. So, But still, you were going but to, you were dealing like, with some bullshit, but you were... Yeah. I felt like... uh. I but dude, not even. I pray to Moses, not swamped, Jesus. Even if you're swamped as a McDonald's employee, I'm sure it's not that fucking bad. Bro, this was some of the craziest putisas I've ever had, and a putisa means an ass beating. Uh, scaffolding, it's heavy shit sometimes, and it's repetitive and it's nonstop. And this is a place, dude, where like there's no like you do a scaffold and then you take a break. No, dude, you do it, boom, do another one, do another one, do another one, do another one, and after you're done. You go unload material at the yard. And then when you're done unloading, then you go load up material, new material. And then when you unload the material, you unload it at the site. And then you start unloading at the site. And then you start building. And it's like, no, we want it done now. We want it done now. We want it done now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my fucking God, dude. I'm like, all right, fuck it, whatever, dude. I'm like, all right, let's get it, man. Dude, I just didn't want to work at El Veneno. So to put into perspective. You're calling them out, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 dude. I, I totally threw them on the bus, and I don't give a shit. And that was a place that. I think 
your family frequented at. No, like your no. no. I was a lone wolf. Not your family, but like some yeah, some family members no. go go to the veneno, dude. Oh, the veneno. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Constantly. So what happened was one day there was this guy from El Valle. He's a piece of shit. I hate him. You and know, don't name him. Yeah. I I want to name him because he sucks, but <laughs> whatever. I won't name him, but he's named after a fruit. Because uh, in Mexico, it, that's the first thing they want to do. They want to name you after a fruit, an animal, or yeah. uh, the horoscope. I don't know, dude. Just There's any nicknames for people. Any crazy shit, whatever. This guy's a fucking prick. He used to bully me when I was little and shit. And um, this guy, dude, he happened to be there with everybody. Everyone, and they're all flashy from and you were the working. T- and I was dish- I was washing their dishes. Yeah, it felt like, oh, fuck, humiliated. But then I'm like, you know what, dude? I don't give a fuck, dude. Whatever, dude. Um, These guys, they had their daddy's money and shit, and I was getting it for myself, and I was 16. And they were like 18, 19. So I'm like, whatever, dude. I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm, I'm trying to be a man. So whatever they want to say about me, they're going to say it. And, dude, I, and then I had to work with that guy in the refineries a year or two later. And he tried fucking me in the refinery. But, you know, I wasn't going anymore. When you're a fucking man, when you work hard and when you got to work for your family, dude, you reach a point where you're like, I don't give a fuck um, how old I am anymore. We're all men at this point. So respect me or there might be some bullshit going down. And I did tell him, I said, dude, you better calm your shit or I'll beat your ass. And he's like, <laughs> OK, well, never mind that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah what, dude. Like guys, this is real life, those motherfucker. Those guys don't expect that, especially because they feel like they're superior to you for some reason. Oh, and it's not even. He, I don't even think it's that. It's more that they feel intimidated by your presence, by your your character. They're, they they feel intimidated because they know that, like, damn, they they can't match the the what's it the integrity that you have, dude. This guy, let me. Yeah, no, do this. And guy? I'm not saying that just because you're my cousin. I know because you're a real, you're a, you're a real person. You're not. Yeah. You're not well, a, everyone, a, everyone should be treated good, dude. Yeah. It's just no. you know, bottom line. Treating you know people what I mean? with respect. Yeah. Being nice to people. And, and I'll tell you what, though, like, it, you want to say there's a fine line? There's not a fine line, dude. It like there's a lot of dicks, dude. There's a lot of fucking dicks, and there's a lot of pussies. No, <laughs> but uh, but you gotta, but. That's only because and it I, all has to do with their upbringing. And I yeah. say, yeah, and I say, like, and, and, you know, this is real real shit. Like, there's a lot of dicks and there is a lot of pussies, like, people that don't stand up for themselves. But, you know, it's just a, a matter of life where it takes you. And then it do- life does go in circles and motherfuckers will be assholes. And then and guess what? Run into people. And they'll come back to them. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, like, dude, I'm telling you, dude, like, I mean, as far as my experience, there's a lot of people that used to fuck with me back in the day. And then I ran into them again and dude, the tables were turned and it felt amazing. Amazing. Bro, it's like the best drive. It's 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 fucking amazing. <laughs> Maybe it's I'm too vengeful. I don't know, but it felt great. And it's a big motivator for me. It's what pushes me more. It and makes you realize that you did the right thing in the long run. Like like it, you you didn't yeah, you didn't cave in and give in to whatever bullshit they were on at the time. What I think is like, and I've been thinking about this for a while, is like people say and praise like be humble and they don't realize what being humble really means. Like being humble means, honestly, dude, you will go through a lot of humiliations, a lot of humiliations for being humble. For being humble, you will go through a lot of humiliations and people don't realize that. They think like, automatically you're you're all right you know you're out of that spotlight of being humiliated nah dude being humble means you're being true to yourself and when you're being true to yourself the followers they're gonna point you out like a black sheep oh look oh look and when they're pointing you out what is that doing that's they're trying to humiliate you like oh look he went that way we're going this way he's a fucking idiot he's a fucking dumbass He's going that way. We're going this way. He's going that way. Like, stupid. They, you know, they try to humiliate you along the way. And all you're doing is you're following your path, what's right for you. And they try fucking, you know, try talking shit about that. It's fucking bullshit, dude. But it's but it like, works out at the end of the day. It's kind of like us doing a podcast. There's some good, this, I'm sure there's going to be people that might think like, why the fuck are they doing this? Like, they don't need to be talking and putting their conversations online. 
there's going to be haters in every aspect of life. And there's going to be people that think like, oh, why are you going? You're going against the norm or you're going against what we believe. It's all a belief thing. It's all about it's all. Yeah. So we might think a certain way Like we might feel like, oh, we want to go this route. Like you said, you explain you explained it perfectly. I can't explain it any better how you like how you said it, but it's true. Yeah. yeah like, honestly, like I, I do got like some goals. And you have some goals, and we have some goals, and I don't care, dude. Like, as long as we get our point across and we do what we want to do and we have a good time, like right now we're chilling, we're drinking, you know, we're having a good time. Like, eventually, yeah, I want to have homies in here too, dude, because, dude, I can't tell you how many conversations I've heard with other people that are just so bland, so so lame, not interesting, and... And, you know, to some people, this might not be interesting, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And that's fine. Like, These guys are fucking boring. There's all, nah, but, um, but yeah, there, there's opinions and shit like that. But I'm telling you, like, from my perspective, like, okay, I feel like if you get in a conversation with somebody and out of that conversation, you can learn something or you can feel like I connect with this person. I feel the same way. It just brings out your humanity. You feel great. You feel like yes, like there are other people that relate to me, dude, and and you you do start like kind of separating like real people from from fucking bullshit shitty people, yeah. And and it's really just you know it just keeps going down that route. That when they say this, it's it's um, it's uh what they call it, it's lonely at the top. That's because the black sheep that went that way went by himself, dude. That crowd went that way. You the just lonely reminded me of a gangster song. They say it's lonely at the top and whatever you do. Yeah. You, you always got to watch motherfuckers watch around you. There you go. A hundred percent. A 100%. You do have to watch motherfuckers around you. Because I'm telling you right now, like, just, just um, a hint for anybody at work. I always, um, you kind of know, like, when someone really wants to help you out at work, when someone's fucking you. And I'm telling you, like, work is really, I feel like work is, um, it's a game of chess People, dude, are scared shitless for their job. Shitless when you work in a nine to five. Like people are so worried about being there, about not getting laid off, not getting fired. And I'm, I get worried too. But I and think, you have, yeah, it, it depends on the person too. Like, and everybody has someone that relies on them or that they're worried that they have to provide. Like, but with kids, it's even. It amplifies. Oh, it. Yeah, yeah, dude. So, dude, like, there's been cases where, like, I'm like, okay, I have kids and I have a wife, so I'm justified. I, I need to thrive in my job. But, bro, there's guys that are 50 years old, are limping in my, in my field. They're limping. They can't work that good. They can't even climb ladders or scaffolds or nothing. And they have a wife that's sick at home and, uh, and a kid that's about to go to college. So he's thinking, like, this young guy has all the ability to do this job a hundred times better than me. And and he speaks English and Spanish and he's able bodied. And I'm fucked because I'm limping. I can't do the job he does. Uh, my sight is bad. I can't take great measurements. Uh, and I got a wife at home depending on my insurance. So, dude, that's where shit just gets chaotic in this field because motherfuckers start turning on each other, dude. It's literally like a walking dead situation but for real shit like people are alive like dude they'll start turning on each other bro it's armageddon in the work field that's what i've noticed like people will try throwing you under the bus they'll snitch on you they'll, you'll be a good worker a good learner and they'll be like no ese bueno no vale verga he's not good he's not good <laughs> he's not worth shit, yeah. dude they, you were on the job one day no aprende no aprende el vato Bro, one day is not enough to learn, my dude. I gotta tell you that right now. Like, I have a good, good friend, um, a buddy uh, Gino that I used to work with. He said, uh, "Nobody's born knowing." Oh yeah, dude. And it's true. Like, and that's that that thing. That's what helped me with my previous job when I first started. And you feel like, fuck, man. People are like giving me the stink eye because I'm too slow at this or not good enough at this. It's like, this is the first time I'm doing this. Yeah. But do you feel that, that tension at work sometimes in certain spots or any job you've been in? Like, do you feel like there's people that like are dead nuts on staying in that place and being the, like the dominator of that place to do like, they you take get, the job you, way too serious. You can get that vibe at certain workplaces. Yeah. And dude, 
since I can remember, I've been the type that's very like reserved and I kind of don't uh cave into like people's bullshit. I kind of egos. Like, yeah. I've always checked my ego in that aspect when it comes to the workplace and being around people, even in school too, like trying to be like, okay, this guy's on some other shit, like on an, an ego trip, right? I like that face you made. You look like De Niro right now. Oh, really? Yeah, do it one more time. Sorry. <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't know what fucking face I made. <laughs> do it like that. Come on. Come on. Give it, give it to me. <laughs> sorry, dude. I'm no, not, yeah, but yeah, I'm you're right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. They get yeah. on an ego trip and it's just, yeah, you're going to experience that at every job. And how I see it, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck you, dude. Whatever. Like, like you ain't shit. Like, for me, I'm like, I'll dwell on it a little bit. And then I'm like, why the fuck am I even worried about this shit? I'll tell you this, cutie. Yeah. You should really care because their paranoia will push them to do things out of their way to get you the fuck out or to make you look bad or to keep you lower than them. Always. I'm telling you, man, I honestly feel like what I've learned is that I feel like certain people, they look at this more than... Like a job. It's a dog eat dog world, dude. It's yeah. do- dude. Yeah. When people said that, dude, they weren't fucking seeing a dog eat another dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They saw like, fuck, dude. I'm at this job. This person wants the same position I do, and he's gonna do anything to get there before me. And that's just a fact. So you can be one of those um type of people, but with more moral, with a righteous way of doing it. But while still being cautious of the other person's uh, wrongdoings or, or the other person's uh, bad intentions Correct. for you, it's real, dude. It's real. I swear to God, I've seen it time and time again. But my dumbass was like, oh, if I work hard, everything's going to be all right. People are going to like me. I'm going to be accepted. Fuck no. no, dude. No. You, it, that- you end up being miserable because you're working your ass off and you're not. You know, you're and it gets really worse than that because a lot of the times, why do you work hard? Okay, me sometimes personally, I work hard because the athleticism that I have somehow still with my chubby ass self. But um, you have the energy to do so, and you want you I'm competitive. So like, let's say like it's a labor job. Just look at it like this: labor job. Look at it like this. I'm working, and I have a coworker, and another coworker, another coworker. And put into perspective that we're in a basketball. Um, You're on a team. We're in a bat. Not even then. Well, we should look at it that way. But we're looking at it like this. We're all doing single shots. And let's see who can score more shots. Honestly, I look at it like that. But I look at it on a healthy way. I'm not like, okay, I'm going to do more shots and then go tell my boss, hey, <laughs> I did more shots than him. He sucks. <laughs> he sucks. No, put him on the bench. Nah, yeah. dude. I'm like. I want to do more shots because I want to be better than him. That's it. And you should be like that. Dude, you should want to be better than the people next to you. Because if you don't, that means you suck as a human being because you have no ambition to being better. You should want to be better, dude. You should want to be better. But there's a way of being better while being um, having healthy ambition, while having a healthy way of looking at it versus just fucking wanting to be better for just your malicious fucking intent. That you, oh, yeah. I want to be the, the boss of here and I want to boss people around. Like, no, dude, no. be the best because it's going to make you feel good because you want to try to get better, be better at what you do. You might not even end up being the best, but it's the fact that you set that milestone for yourself and you get better at it. Yeah. It's the same thing. I mean, even just like, because like you said, it's not to be like more like, oh, yeah, because I'm going to be the best. No, it's it's uh it's a for yourself. It's kind of like skateboarding. It's therapeutic. Every time we're doing skateboarding, we're trying to better ourselves each time. Exactly. And it's the same thing. You're trying to perfect, say, a manual. Well, you remember when I would tell you, like, hey, dude, do this trick so then I can feel more. And I never got the trick, guys. (laughs) But but remember, I would tell you, like, hey, dude, do this trick so then I can be more motivated and more. uh, It gives you more incentive. to. It enticed me more to do it because I see you do it. And I'm like, I want to do it. And that's human nature, dude. And you'll notice that in little kids like my son. He's, um, you know, since he was a baby, watching his sister, whatever his sister did, he wanted to do it. He wanted to do it. What's that? 
That's the same shit, dude. That's the <laughs> same shit. You see someone doing something, then you should want to do it too and probably even better. But now that you get older, you got to learn. Okay, he did that. I'm going to try to do a, a more perfected way of doing that. And that's an innovative human being. So that's how you decide. Are you a person that's a follower or are you a leader? Are you going to try to find an innovative way of doing the, whatever the fuck he did? Or are you going to do it the same way and be happy with that for the rest of your life? I know I met these guys that they they got in there and did a job that that has been getting done for years. And um, and they did it the hard way that took forever, like three, three, four hours. This guy went in there, dude. He found a way to do that job in 30 minutes. He was innovative. He was creative. And he got shit done because he said, no, there's a better way of doing this. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, but I'll pass to you, dude, because I, I think we're getting ready to just close this bitch up. No, no, this was a good episode, I think. But no, and I want to, I guess, because you were bringing up the people being innovative and we were talking about skateboarding before we got into that discussion. Rodney Mullen, dude, that's an example right there. Those guys that stand out in skateboarding because, like, it's not that they were trying. But tell the people who Rodney Mullen is, just, just a he's brief. Like, he's like the godfather of skateboarding. He's like a creative dude, right? For yeah. skateboarding, he invented like a he bunch of street he tricks. He invented mo like most of the street tricks that there's variations of now. But yeah, he invented like I'm sure like the kickflip, the ollie, and all that shit. Um, but yeah, no, that's yeah. This there's, there's always gonna be that one person that kind of changes the game and has a different perspective. And I like that, dude. I and mean, then someone is better than him now. And then it just keeps going. Yeah. And then someone else creates something else, right? We're always right? emulating our, whoever influenced us. But is it through generally everybody? Or is it that one person that just said, fuck it, I'm going to just change it up? That's what I'm saying. Like, it go, it turns into, like, the black sheep. Like, someone is always going to go that way and just do what they want to do. And people are not going to be okay with it because it's different. But like, and like then they just said, keep recreating. But like you said, I think it's intent, dude. Because I think it's intention. The people that make it all the way, I think it's because of the intention. Like when they did it, they did. They were not looking about anything monetary. They weren't looking for any any gain from it but for themselves. Just that and ambition, then, right? And then the moment they get big, that's when it becomes like, okay, either they're still going to continue to be the be the humble person like rodney mullen he's yeah. a humble person you don't really hear much about him publicly mm -hmm. that's true or they're gonna be these people that are on a bigger scale i'm not gonna name the names but yeah people that are in like in the billions but they're assholes and that's what i'm saying you gotta care about what people around you are doing what their intentions are because for that same reason you might be the most you could be the most successful person on this fucking world and you won't be because you're thinking that your your greatness your in that you being innovative is going to bring to the top just like tesla with fucking uh, you're edison a, you're not a god tesla got fucked tesla was like the smartest motherfucker in the world he he was like one of the best scientists that um ever been on this planet the most innovative guy he came up with so much shit so many patents and edison totally fucked them over took credit for a lot of his shit and and there you go. That malicious intent, that laziness. I mean, he Edison was great too, but dude, Tesla was way better, in my opinion, from what I've seen. And at the end of the day, dude, like this guy thought that just being um, innovative and not careful with what with his surroundings, he was gonna make it and he did it. He got fucked. So like be great at what you do, be innovative, and then watch what you do, man. Take care of your stuff and take ownership of what you do and your accomplishments because um, I feel like the most salty shit would be um, you accomplish something great and then someone takes credit for it. So be that to me, that's that's really being woke is uh, awaken your senses, watch your surroundings, uh, choose your people carefully and uh, make the right move. Fuck yeah, dude. You said it perfectly. Bloody Roots. Bloody Roots. Podcast, Check it out, guys. guys. We'll be in next week for a new, fresh episode, guys. Hell yeah. This is great. Peace out, guys.